Welcome back to Paper Mountains Podcast. Here we are, episode 18. It's been a bit of a break here, but I have one of my good friends, Josh Nye. Uh, maybe even my oldest friend that I've had because we went to preschool together. We've been neighbors our entire lives. Um, we partied through high school and college together. And we got this right in the nick of time because I'm flying out to Puerto Rico tomorrow. And we've been talking about doing this for a while now. So I'm really glad we're sitting down here to have this conversation. And yeah, we're just going to go into it. So yeah. please welcome Josh Nye. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to it. You're okay, right. Dude. We've talked about it for a while now. So it's good to finally get into it. It is. So let's do a cheers on that yeah. one. Cheers. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see. It's good. I'm not. It did taste good after a stressful day of getting wedding <laughs> preparation done, and yeah. I'm ready to to get out of the country and then go back to our travels. Yeah. So I'm gonna get back into <laughs> the leisurely mindset because yeah. it seems like I've been on the go since I've been back here in the states. That sounds good. I'm looking forward to that too. I don't know if I. We talked about uh, we're taking a trip to Mexico here in a couple of weeks. So yeah. I'm looking forward to the leisure mindset as well. Yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah. What, which part of Mexico are you guys going to? Uh, Cancun. Yep. And you said, you, yeah, we talked about this a little bit at your house when we were, what, two or three weeks ago now? Yeah. And that's going to be like your whole family, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was probably, I don't know, it's probably a year ago now. We were busting our butts for a while just doing different work. Um, like I've been doing a lot of home renovations. We were doing some work on the farm and, and then everything with COVID had a lot of stress and, and me and my family, we were all like, Hey, we, we need to do something to relax a little bit. So we have planned this for a little while now. I think we all thought COVID would be a little bit more, uh, I don't know, gone at this point, but I think, uh, I think we, we're, uh, we're excited to go and it's going to be a good time. How's uh how's Mexico doing with like the COVID? Is there any rules or vaccine or like just testing requirements that you got to do? I I should know more. I know that we have to definitely take a negative uh, COVID test before we come back mm -hmm. to the U.S. Um, so that was one thing I was a little nervous about. If we don't pass the test and have to stay in Mexico for a little bit longer, um, but we'll see. I we all have had COVID recently, so hopefully we. I already passed that and don't have to worry about it. So yeah, yeah. But I, I've, I actually talked to uh, someone in Mexico earlier this week, and they said that the that COVID is a pretty big issue right now in Mexico. So uh, we'll see. We're we're going to relax, and that's yeah. what we're looking forward to doing. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> and I think if you guys don't, I mean, if you're not going to big parties or <clears throat> going to a super crazy event, you know, yeah. the likelihood of catching it's probably pretty slim. I'd assume. Yeah. I think so. Everybody testing and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. It's always good to kind of yeah. get up and explore somewhere else. Have yeah. you been to Mexico before? You know, I haven't. I, uh, I was supposed to go in 2019. Um, it was my fault. I had sent in my passport to, um, to actually get a China visa and it took a little bit too long to get my passport back. And then I missed out on a trip to Mexico. So I haven't been to Mexico before. I'm looking forward to it. Um, we've been, me and Heather, my wife, we went to Belize for our honeymoon. Um, that was a couple of years ago already. So this will be the first time going to Mexico. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, yeah, dude. That's good. Was yeah. the other trip supposed to be for work? Yeah. Yeah, oh, it was. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so unfortunately, I missed out on that one. And then in 2020, I was supposed to go to London for a work trip in April of 2020. And unfortunately, that's right when COVID was starting to happen. So I kind of missed out on that trip, too. So, yeah, this will be the first time I guess I've left the country in a couple years now. Um, so I'm oh, yeah, looking dude. forward to getting back into it. Yeah, it's always good. Yeah. I mean, I love traveling, obviously. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you inspire me. Yeah, dude, it's good. <laughs> I wish it would be great if you could come to Puerto Rico. Yeah. <laughs> we're, so we're going there for three weeks, actually. And yeah. Morgan's mom and her aunt are coming, are going to go down the first week and meet wow. up with us. That's awesome. And then my parents are going to come down the third week. Nice. And then they're, we're, so we hooked up a couple of Airbnbs and yeah. uh, we got a car and just kind of 
planning the trips around the whole island right now. Yeah. So I'm sure you could find a flight from Cancun to Puerto Rico <laughs> and <laughs> make this work out. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them you got COVID and you got, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I, but don't worry. I bring, brought my work laptop so I can still work a little bit yeah. and just fly over to Puerto Rico. I'm still <laughs> working from home or have a lot of flexibility, so I could probably swing that. Yeah. I'm sure Heather and Merrick wouldn't mind too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's pretty easy too with it, like being a U.S. territory. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, they don't, they just changed. If you're vaccinated, you don't even need to test really to, to go into the country. Yeah. And we're flying out of Miami and Florida doesn't, isn't requiring any testing from Puerto Rico to, uh, Miami either. So it's like nice. pretty easy if yeah. you're vaccinated. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. The rules are always constantly changing with that shit with travel. Yeah. So knock on wood, all of our flights and everything works out. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to uh, a coworker that he he travels to Asia a lot. He recently had to get a, he was traveling back to Asia and got a COVID test and apparently they had to stick it down his throat and then also stick it up his nose. I guess that's how they were trying to test if he had it or not. Mm-hmm. And uh, apparently they stuck the same side down his throat and also <laughs> back up his nose. So hopefully we don't have to go through anything like that. But <laughs> Yeah, that, they're not the funnest tests to have. <laughs> Even if they're just the nose ones. Yeah. They go a little far sometimes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. So, yeah, Mexico on the plan now, but I don't know. Let's just go a little bit back into um, kind of where your life led you to where you're at today, if that's cool. Yeah, sure. Um, I don't think we really need to get into high school too much. I want to get a little bit into college. Um, yeah. Specifically, on like uh, you ma- went to go- going to Bowling Green University and, yeah. and majoring in business. Yeah. Do you like what was the path that led to to you choosing a, a business major and then like your focus and and then ultimately your career where you're at now? Yeah, that's a uh, that's a good question. Something I've thought about myself quite a bit over the years, and really, I think I I knew I wanted to go to some form of further education after high school, Bowling Green. Seemed like a good choice just with the proximity. The location of it was somewhat close to home. I kind of wanted that. Um, I knew they had a good business program. That's kind of what I wanted to go into, although I didn't have a specific focus necessarily that I wanted to go into. So there was a, there was basically just a general business class. It was called like BA 101 or something like that. And basically they would go through the different areas of business like finance, accounting, supply chain. And I think we went through a few of them, like accounting and stuff. And I'm like, geez, this is not what I want to do. And so I finally got to the supply chain class and something just clicked for me. And I think I think for me, it was really thinking back to how I grew up on a farm and just seeing like how you how you grow something and then you take it somewhere and sell it. And then they take it and either produce it into something else and then it goes on to to a finished product like the whole supply chain I could kind of just visualize it very well and I couldn't really do the same thing with other areas of business and so I decided to go down that path and uh and I think it worked out well I mean I I enjoyed a lot although with the with the global supply chain challenges now it's not always fun but I still still glad I went down that path um and I don't know, I can't say I was ever a great student in high school. I don't think I put as much effort as I needed to into <laughs> it. But, uh, and I would say even college the first year or so, um, not so much. But as I got into it more, something really started to click and I really focused in it. Um, and, and yeah, I enjoyed it. And that's kind of how I got into it. So actually, I don't, I don't know this, um, with how business majors work, did you have to like specific once in college, did you choose supply chain and like, that's what you went down or was it all broad? And then supply chain was what you enjoyed. And then you kind of went to that after college. Yeah, I think there's, I think that, I think you could go down a few different paths. Obviously I think you could go down as uh, like my degree, it's called business, administ- business administration with a specialization in supply chain management. And so you could either just do a general business degree, like Heather's Heather's degree is um, business management, so just general business. But she took a lot of the same classes I did, like accounting, but just not a major focus into supply chain management. Um, so yeah, I guess 
everyone could kind of decide whether they, want, they wanted to go into accounting, finance, supply chain, or just general business. Mm-hmm. So that's that's kind of how it was set up for BG. Nice. I you you said a couple of things there, and it made me uh, spark back to a couple of memories of yeah. when you said not trying too hard in high school and <laughs> and maybe the first year of college. Yeah. Um, did when you got, I I, I mean obviously we out. I was right there with you with yeah. uh, thought, thought I was sitting there in like the study hall library of doing all of our math homework and algebra yeah. and calculus stuff right before yeah. it was due. Um, I think I just kind of, I, I was, didn't even think twice about it yeah. um, in high school. But when I, when we went to college, I think both of our mindsets changed a little bit. Yeah. Was there a specific reason of why you wanted to maybe take your education more seriously the older you got, or is it just part of growing, growing up? <laughs> I, you know, I, I can't think of a certain reason why I really started to focus other than maybe it was just more maturity. Mm-hmm. I look back at, I don't know, some of the things maybe not being as focused and thought I, I really need to figure out what I want to do. Cause like I said, even when I first started, it was, it was just general business until I learned more about supply chain. So I think actually just looking into one focus helped narrow it down for me and realize this is something like I could actually do. Um, I would say that's probably more of what helped me out and just general maturity and growing up yeah. from 20 to 21, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 22. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I think it's crazy though. Like, uh, I don't know. I, when I look back at my life and when I say that I'm only 27 now, so yeah. it's not like I'm that old, but it, <laughs> I see like a few different distinct, parts of my life like high school was one thing then just like going to college was completely different and then to where I'm at now it's just another feels like another life so it's it's really amazing and I don't know I'm only 27 so who knows what it's gonna be when I'm 37 or 47 or 87 it's hard to imagine (laughs) man and it's crazy too because when I sit down and think about how long ago that was like you said we're only 20 I'm 26 you're 27 but High school seems so long ago yeah. and we're coming up on our 10 years of graduation. Yeah. And then in the grand scheme of things, you know, 10 years is, is a long time, but it's also not. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and it's like, but dude, so much has happened in between that yeah. and, and now. Yeah. I know when you said, uh, doing homework and study hall, I mean, that's what we did. I, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I think we talked about it a lot, like, there's only a handful of times I actually did homework at home. It was just like, we would try to do it quick. Um, we probably looked at each other's papers more too often. And <laughs> it was just like, we tried to get it done. I feel like we all did fairly well though. Like yeah. I feel like we could get by with what we did. Although looking back, I mean, I guess what I think now is I, I love learning. I still do. And I don't think in high school, I really cared that much to learn. I don't know like if my perspectives just changed or what. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, I, I don't know. I was just more focused on probably things I shouldn't have been focused on. <laughs> yeah. That's life though. Right. Yeah. Should have, could have, would have with anything. Right. Um, I enjoyed it. So yeah, for sure. I had fun. I, I'm really glad where <clears throat> I'm at today too, with having more of an appreciation for just learning. Yeah. It's cause it's something I definitely didn't take seriously when I was younger, but now just like, the fact that just to, to learn anything is cool. Yeah. The history or science or what's going on in the world yeah. or how business works. I, all of it's like, dude, s- give it to me and send it my way. I'll, I'll try to get into it, dive down if I think yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. I'm the same way now. Like there's certain things that really spark my interest and I can, I can get into those so easily, but even like, even random things now, I just want to know like how it works, like, like, you know, what's going on with it. And just so I can also have conversations with different people and, and then, you know, go from there. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Um, with, while we're still kind of talking about the past a little bit, I do want to go into one topic that I just thought of with, with along with high school, I went to construction trades yeah. and, and trade school and you did uh collision repair. Yeah. Why, why did you do collision repair? I don't know if I've ever asked you that. And like, why did it, why did you fall into that direction of wanting to go to trade school in high school? I think at the time, like a lot, I, I, so I kind of mentioned it. I grew up on a farm and I always enjoyed that. Um, I think when I was, whatever it was, 15 or 16, when we had to decide, like, if we wanted to go to 
um, you know, trade school or not. I was like, yeah, I mean, I, I like doing that kind of stuff, you know, working with my hands, like building something. Um, at the time, I wasn't so sure I wanted to go to college. I kind of, you know, wanted to, but I also thought it's it's always hopeful to learn a trade. And I still I still think that, I mean, for anyone to know a trade, to be able to do something, it's extremely valuable. And so I thought I could at least learn some type of trade, you know, along the way. Um, I, you know, I had it narrowed down to um, uh, building trades and collision repair. Um, I would say looking back now, I kind of wish I did building trades just because I, I've been renovating my house <laughs> and I think there's a lot of things I probably could have picked up on. But I'm I I don't regret doing collision repair because I think it still has helped me and um, there's a lot of good things I learned um, and who knows maybe I maybe I'll still use it in the future I think whenever I have time on my hands I like to get into repairing stuff you know um, fixing up an old tractor fixing up an old car and just you know bringing it back to life so yeah I think it, that stuff still interests me although where I'm at now I can't say I don't know. I, it's benefited me, but it's not, you know, what I'm currently doing. Not in an everyday use yeah. or anything, yeah. but it's just one of those things. Yeah. I do work for a tire company, so. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Still part of the auto. Yeah, yeah. I could make an argument there. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned remodeling your house. Yeah. This has been a project for you. Did you yeah. guys start this before COVID or uh, was it post COVID? In some ways before, but mostly after. So when I say before, we live in an old farmhouse. We started we started renovating it when we first moved in, mainly the first floor, um, to make it move inable. Um and so we had done that before COVID and then it was about I guess it was just about a year ago now, a little over a year ago, is when we started to go into the upstairs remodeling. So that was after COVID. Um, and so that's been a long process. It seems like a long process. It's, it's only been a year, but we also got into a pretty big undertaking that we're getting closer towards the end of. Yeah. How's it feel to get towards the end? It feels good. I mean, <laughs> it feels really good. Uh, me and Heather and Merrick, uh, we've all shared a room so far, but Merrick's over a year and a half. He's going on two years old now, so it's nice for him to get his own room and me and Heather to have our own room. Um, so we're almost there. I was just finishing staining and polyurethane uh, Merrick's floor in oh, the past nice. few days. So he should be able to move into that room. And Heather and my room's pretty much done upstairs. So we're close. And then there's one more room upstairs that will need to be done also. Um, so I I think that's on my list of things to do in 2022 <laughs> to try to get that done. So that's just one room. The other rooms kind of all led into each other. There's a few chimneys that needed taken out. There was uh, two closets that we took out to put in a bathroom that wasn't there before. So um, that was quite a large project that kind of led into a few different rooms. And so it made the whole upstairs a mess, the whole rest of our house pretty much a mess. Um, and then the whole downstairs has been cluttered just because we haven't used, you know, the whole upstairs or yeah. most of the rooms upstairs. So now that we can have a few extra rooms in our house, we can even all our junk out and put it where it needs to go. <laughs> yeah. As a, I mean, <clears throat> with me doing that myself as well for the rental properties, um, like that in itself was so much of a learning process. Yeah. Like such, such little things before I started, yeah. uh, were overlooked of yeah. what, what you're going to have to do. And like polyurethane and staining and, a floor is something that, you know, I would have never thought of before remodeling. Like that yeah. would be something I'd be doing as a part of that process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. I mean, I, there's a lot of things throughout this process I've learned or had to learn and I value all of them. I mean, it's, it, it's one thing. I mean, I, I enjoy doing it just cause it's, uh, you can, you know that you did it and you can make all the decisions on it and do it the way you want to. Although in some cases, I kind of wish I had someone else doing it. Just, <laughs> it would have got done a lot quicker, I'm sure, and maybe looked a little bit more professional. But I feel pretty good with what we've done, um, and I'm pretty happy with it. Do you think uh, Do you think that's something instinctual within us of, 
of building and like taking so much pride in it because it's so it's I don't know it's so funny to me if yeah, I was the same way. It was like when I finished something, I was like, oh, hell yeah, I did yeah. that. <laughs> I wonder what it is. I think I, I I have to believe so. I mean, I'm I'm that way with anything. Yeah. Even if we're outside like farming, working ground, it's like you can see like how much you, how much he did and yeah. how much he got done. It's more so that way. It's more like instant gratification. This way it's somewhat like instant gratitude. Like you can see what you did, but yeah, it, it's also, I was going to say, it's also challenging when, you're only working on it like three hours a night after work and a little bit on Saturday and Sunday to try and get it done. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I've had to burp every once in a while. And I'm like, <laughs> That's some things that I've been cos- <laughs> cognizant about too, especially if you're drinking IPAs and beers. Yeah. Uh, you know, you start belching a little bit and you get a little yeah. bloated. <laughs> Don't want to do it right in the mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, take me down the road to supply chain a little bit. I, I would like to say that I know about it, but I probably don't. Can, can you explain and like this whole like ecosystem of business and like your, your focus supply chain with schooling and your job, how would you explain that to somebody of what you do and, (laughs) and how does that affect how a business runs? Yeah, sure. So uh, I guess going back to college a little bit, the, and this is also what interests me about supply chain, why I got into it, was they had it broken out into like four different areas. Um, so one was purchasing, one was, um, one I think they called supply chain. Um, one was actually quality. Quality was a class I really enjoyed. I'd like to get into it more at some point in my career because I did enjoy it. The other was logistics, um, and there may have been one more. So I liked it just because there's a lot of different areas that you could go into just under this supply chain focus. Um, But really, it's just getting product, getting materials from one place to the next to the next. Um, And so just as as an example, like um, what I do in my job is we get what we call raw materials um, into our plants to produce the end product, which is a tire. Um, but when I say raw materials, the, our suppliers also have raw materials ahead of that. So they may be taking like crude oil and burning it into ash and making carbon black. And then we call that the, the raw material. And then we get that to our plants. And then, um, you know, they put that into their compounds to make, you know, the compounds they need to make a tire. And so you think of that piece of the supply chain and then there's a whole nother end to it because it still needs to go to you know, the customer and then, uh, to the end consumer, um, or it may go to like, uh, it may go to, a uh, uh, auto manufacturer. And then that, you know, that car is built, it goes to the, you know, uh, car sales lot and then it, you know, someone buys it off the lot. So it's really the whole process of, you know, where material starts to how it gets built and then to the end consumer. Mm-hmm. Um, and really through all that, you know, um, you like my area, we, we negotiate the volumes and pricing. So that's really the procurement areas where we're deciding what suppliers to buy from how much and, you know, at what pricing, then there's the whole logistics piece of it. So, you know, someone has to get it from one place to the next. So there's a lot of, you know, working with carriers, working with ocean vessels. Are you doing um, that directly with your position or is there just people that are, um, dealing with like all right so now you found your supplier and your provider and then are you trying to do like figure out that how to get that material to a to b for the cheapest as possible or yeah so in in my current position i'm mainly working with the suppliers negotiating the pricing and volumes and then from there we would place the po's and most of the time someone else will handle the whole logistics piece of it okay now there's there's different what are called inco terms. Basically, if it's a uh, delivered price all the way to you know our plant, or if we do a different inco term where basically we're saying we will handle the logistics of it, and then they don't have to worry about the handling the logistics to our plant. Um, and it, even in that case, if we did that, there's a, there's a different logistics group that would handle that piece of getting it to our plant, and then really that group would work with the carriers, the, you know, trucking companies, ocean vessels to get it where it needs to go. 
there's a there's a lot in the process and it always kind of amazes me and i have i have a a great respect for you know truck drivers logistics people just when you see them on the road you know like it was always cool to me like hey we ordered <laughs> you know we placed the order for that truck they you know go somewhere to get loaded and then they haul it you know across multiple states to get it you know to us um and then we get it consumed but then there's you know also different modes of transportation rail cars trucks airplane boat you know yeah. so there's a lot that goes into it i think that's why i, why I enjoy it a lot just because there's there's a lot to think about i like I, I like having some challenges to solve and figure out the best options. Um, that's something that's always been pretty, pretty neat for me to, to figure out. Yeah. I mean, dude, you're talking on a, on a global scale too. Yeah. Like the, you, yeah. you can be getting it from anywhere around the world, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much depending on the material. Um, some of them there's, you know, suppliers they're mainly in asia or mainly in the u.s and north america sometimes they're more so in europe so yeah. it kind of just depends on what what material it is yeah <laughs> <laughs> dude that uh that path is what i mean you mentioned you know that whole process is from origination to consumer essentially yeah. somebody is dealing with the supply chain yeah at, of some capacity and that entire path yeah and you know, I would say nine out of 10 people only think of the last path, you know, yeah. the like retail provider to consumer purchase. Yeah. But that, that path has been going for fucking years to yeah. get to that point already, <laughs> which is crazy. Yeah. The, the fact that this shit works and that we can still buy tires for what sometimes 25 to 50 bucks a piece yeah. is insane. Like you, after you probably, especially like, seeing what you pay for things and how long it takes yeah. to get things. And you could like, I don't know. It just seems like it should, like you should pay more for getting shit from Asia yeah. with them uh, from their crude process, put it on a barge and then like months and months later, finally getting it as a product. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. All the steps it goes through. I mean, as you were just talking there, I was thinking like some of the products that come from Asia, like it may, it's probably produced at a supplier's plant, it has to be trucked to a port. It gets loaded on a vessel. Sometimes those vessels aren't direct um, to the U.S. They may go to a different port in Asia to be transloaded onto a bigger vessel. Yeah. And then those come to just the port in the U.S. And then, you know, those would get offloaded off the vessel and then put on a truck and probably take into a warehouse somewhere and then shipped to us. So it's like just that part of the process. There's multiple steps. And that's not even considering, you know, from the supplier's side, what they had to do to get the raw materials <laughs> to their plant. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah. And then you think like when you buy something, like how can this even be this cheap? Cause yeah. it's like how many different people touch their hands on that or had some role in it. Yeah. Um, so it's crazy to think about. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, you, we talked about this last year. I don't know if I stopped over at house. I think I stopped over your house. We had a couple of drinks and I want you to, Go into a little more detail than we did last year. Um, when you said, you're like, dude, just I'm stressed out from work. Uh, so much is going on at once. And it was right when the, the Suez Canal was backed <laughs> up. Yeah. Can you explain how that directly affected your role in, in your life? Um, with with a brief explanation of that, of a giant barge, basically. I think what I read was an engine failed and then it <laughs> turned and then it blocked the entire, this, this major canal route yeah. for transportation of materials. So yeah. you said you were dealing with this firsthand. Yeah. So I'll take you one step back. Cause, okay. Um, I mean, a lot of things started with the pandemic with COVID. So a lot of things shut down in April, March and April, 2020. Um, for the plants that I work with, they completely shut down for about a month or six weeks. Um, and so no materials were moving. Like we, we weren't getting materials in. And then as that started back up, it was just kind of like, like everything had to get restarted. But at the same time, like depending on where the materials were coming from, you know, this country might have been shut down in some ways and not allowing people to work because they were trying to control COVID. Um, or like the ports weren't operating because they had COVID outbreaks. So it was like difficult to get materials that you needed. 
Um, and so that was a lot of 2020, 2020, just trying to get, you know, caught back up and to a more normal, which Mm -hmm. we're still not at a more normal, (laughs) I don't think. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was a big thing. Um, there was, uh, one of the people in my department had taken a new job. And so we were kind of running with a person short, you know, trying to go through all these issues. Um, the company I worked for then got acquired by another company. Um, and so there was like multiple, multiple things going on since, you know, early 2020. Um, and then in like February, about a year ago, February, 2021, there was a massive winter storm that went through, through the South and it knocked out a lot of things. Um, a lot of chemical plants in Texas and Louisiana, they, they were down and, um, down for a period of time and and that caused a lot of issues for us and then to your question the, the Suez Canal I think happened in April so you're on you're on now you're on four layers of why <laughs> of <laughs> yeah. why your your life was uh, stressful yeah exactly <laughs> there was there was a lot of things even before the Suez Canal that uh yeah had me very stressed out um so then the Suez Canal happened a vessel got stuck like sideways in the Suez Canal. Um, And the reason this impacted me is some of the materials I have, they come from Asia. Um, They come come down around, uh, I guess, down around India and then back up uh, towards, you know, Africa and the Middle East. The Suez Canal is right in between there. Um, So some of the shipping routes, they actually go up through the Suez Canal and then up closer to Europe. And then over to the eastern side of the U.S. to a port. And so as the Suez Canal was blocked, the vessels weren't able to go up through there. Um, In some cases, they were either just, you know, waiting until that got cleared or having to go down around the Horn of Africa, which was adding, you know, I don't know, 20 extra days, let's just say. Um, And this was when we were still trying to get materials that we needed. Like we were still short um, with everything else in the world going on. And so it eventually got cleared up. Um, we got the materials, but uh, it was still a major issue. And the overall just global logistics is has been a, a mess. There's just a shortage of containers and vessel space and freight rates have skyrocketed. Are you still dealing with, <clears throat> dealing with that? Yeah, definitely. Um, like, for example, freight rates, they... We're normally, let's just say, three thousand dollars a container. They had gone up to like ten thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand. Oh, Some rates I saw thirty thousand. Um, it's kind of normalized, somewhat, but um, yeah, it was just the uh, lack of space. The vessel companies have been charging what they could because there was so much demand. Um, yeah, and just not enough space for it. So. That's why if uh, if you're buying something, the price of it's probably a little bit more expensive now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll see if uh, that inflation numbers, uh, they uh, keep holding up. I hope they don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So everything will be more expensive and the stock market will take a shit here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what happens, but yeah, it's what we love in. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been quite the... I don't know, past two years now, um, which I I think most people would probably know. I try to stay optimistic and look at the best in things. And, you know, the one thing I keep telling myself is I'm, I've got a long ways to work yet, I guess, until I retire. I think <laughs> going through, you know, some of the most challenging situations like this will, in the end, I think, benefit me just having gone through that type of scenario and determining how best to move forward with it and you know what strings you need to pull to keep keep your plants running and get the material um so i think there's a lot of good takeaways but i know a lot of people in the that i work with that have been doing it for 25 30 years they tell me this is worse they've ever seen it so i guess i can only hope it goes better from here (laughs) yeah hopefully i mean and it's also kind of crazy too that i mean us maybe us in particular, you know, are still pretty fortunate with our, our, uh, like, I'm trying to think of the right word for it. Like our lives are pretty good. Yeah. Granted, given like how much shit can 
go up as expensive as they can be for a business or a company. Yeah. And like at the end of the day, you know, like our, our life isn't too bad. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I completely hope, agree. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't get too much worse um, because yeah. it could be a lot tougher for a lot of people. Yeah. But who knows, man? We'll see where, le- where everything goes. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think I could always, it could always be worse. I mean, I, I feel fortunate with, you know, where we're at and, you know, hope, you know, hopefully things go in a better direction going forward. But yeah, there, there was this book I read, I don't know, a year ago now. It's called Man Searching for Meeting. Have you ever heard of that or read that book? I haven't. Fuck, dude. It's the heaviest shit book. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost too heavy. It's a first person, I think the only first person book written of a person who survived a, a concentration camp in World wow. War II. And he was a psychiatrist or a doctor. And then he wrote down like his whole first hand experience of the entire process. Mm. And then the second half of the book is like his whole philosophy perspective that he gained from it yeah of like always having a will to live and like the meaning of suffering and yeah and the will to live and it just basically the whole book puts it into perspective of dude as bad as you got it you're not even close to what this guy he just makes yeah. like it makes you feel like shit of like anytime you ever complained <laughs> about anything yeah and you then you just go god i'm such a bitch like what the <laughs> fuck like what am i complaining about when i just read this happening this atrocious thing happening to a person and yeah. uh, millions of people yeah but to like actually read it, it it was insanely heavy yeah but like if that uh, it's an interesting book i would recommend it but just with a, a huge like forewarning of like hey, this isn't like a light reading book and yeah. <laughs> it's like you read it and you kind of just get depressed it's like, oh <laughs> fuck this is horrible yeah <laughs> I have to, I have to put that on my list. That sounds like something I'd definitely be interested in reading. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I look for things that you know give you some perspective, and yeah. I think that's definitely something that would, you know, change your outlook a little bit or change oh, yeah. the way you look at things. Yeah, it may. I mean, I was just being negative today about like the printer not working and my computer <laughs> not working, right? Yeah. And it's like I'm getting pissed off, and I should just like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck, am I getting pissed off about? There's no reason to. See, you should have been thinking about that when you were butchering uh, a few weeks ago out in the cold and you're like, I, I wish I was in Brazil. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I was. Just complain about, I've been complaining about how cold it was. I got to shut my ass up. It's 15 degrees outside, but still we're down here just talking and drinking beer. So can't complain about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, I want to go into a little bit, uh, you getting married and f- having a family and stuff. Yeah you're in a different position in life than I am because I am not to that point of having kids or anything. Yeah. Um, I think, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but my first memory of Heather, your wife was us in your bedroom in BG, <laughs> um, doing shots of Jack Daniels. Yeah. And then somebody getting sick at the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. but you guys have, so you end up getting married and stuff and having a family now and a kid. How how has that whole growth um, changed your perspective on life, um, starting a family and getting married? Yeah, in a lot of ways. Um, I mean, it's it's completely different from one just being a single guy doing you know whatever I want and you know going wherever. Uh, then two, uh, Heather and I met uh, in an accounting class at Bowling Green. Uh, it was kind of neat because she grew up in Tiffin. We grew up in New Eagle, only, you know, 10 or 15 minutes apart. So then for us to meet up there was pretty neat. Um, and yeah, we, it may have been the first time or one of the first times we were in my bedroom at Bowling Green during a party and, and we we're trying to polish off a bottle of Jack. <laughs> I don't think we quite got there, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, then going like to being in a relationship, uh, you know, as an, another step where, you know, you're, uh, I don't know, you, you have meaning to someone else and vice versa. And, you know, you start to build that relationship and talk about, you know, what your goals are, like what, what you think about things and start to know them. Um, and then, yeah, once you get to a point getting married, uh, is, you know, a whole nother piece that really just solidifies it. Um, 
Uh, and then, you know, we, we had our son, he's almost two years old now. And I think that has really, you know, changed a lot of things as well in a lot of different ways. I mean, I think the biggest thing is he makes me just want to be like, uh, I don't know. He really makes watching him watch me like really makes me think of what I need to do as a person. Like Mm -hmm. he's really relying on me watching me, what I do, like, And then you can see he picks it up so quickly and like starts doing what you're doing. So I don't know. It always just makes me think of, you know, how I need to act, like what I need to teach him, like, you know, just what I need to do in life with him. Um, So it's been a whole different perspective. And um, just starting our family uh, has been, you know, another change in life that, that we talked about. So. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I bet, man. Like, I you, I I can only imagine is is you you have to feel like you you got to be less selfish about yeah. every decision because <laughs> that's what I feel like. And me and Morgan are hundred percent in the selfish stage. Yeah, we're like, dude, I don't want to have to not feel guilty <laughs> about like just like quitting our jobs and going to Brazil for three months. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas if you have a kid in that mixture, you got to go. All right, we got to think about this a little bit. Whereas right now, yeah. fuck it, I'm. I don't have to, no one's relying on me, so let's go for yeah. it. I think, you know, the other thing I would say, too, is, like, I always looked up to my dad a lot. Like, I always thought he was the smartest. Like, he knew how to do everything. Like, he would, I don't know, anything we would be working on, like, I couldn't get it, and he would just try one time and get it. And I was always just amazed. And and then I then when I look at Merrick, like, when he was first born, I was like, man, I need to get in shape. Like, I want to be, like, in good shape for him. I need to read some more books so I can teach him. Like, if he's asking me questions, I feel like I need to know how to answer them. So at first, and still am to an extent, but, like, right after he was born, I was just, like, fired up, like, to figure out how I could be the best dad for him. And I think a lot of that is just, like, looking at my dad and thinking, like, you know, how how it just seemed like he could do everything and just watching him so yeah that's what i've also tried to emulate for merrick i'm still working on it there's a lot there's a lot that i want to learn yet like i feel like i i'm still learning myself that's kind of what's unique as well like i'm trying to still learn and grow as a person myself yeah and then also trying to teach merrick um you know about life and protect him and and this and that so it's that's that's also been a interesting dynamic as well. I bet, dude. That's great. I mean, it's got to be a crazy experience. Yeah. But I, I mean, it sounds extremely positive from your yeah. point of view of uh, for everybody involved. If it's making you feel like you're trying to be a better person <laughs> and you want to make him a better person, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good outcome of of, <laughs> yeah. of that decision. <laughs> yeah, we we do our best. Um, we're. We're all working on it, definitely. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. That's good stuff. Well, congrats on it. Yeah. Um, I, I can cut this out, but congrats on the second kid <laughs> coming on the way, too. Yeah, if you no don't worries. Want- <laughs> um, I don't, you don't need to cut that out. I think uh, most people are getting aware of that now. So yeah, we're excited about that as well to take another step. Um, You know, it's been fun with the three of us now. So at getting to a fourth family member is going to be a, another step. Um, Hopefully... We've learned a little bit in the first, you know, year and a half, two years, almost with Merrick now. So that will give us some good insights about what to expect for the second one. But yeah, we'll have our hands a little bit more full now. We've got a, a crazy puppy as well, so he he likes to drive us insane a little bit. So yeah, we will have a couple little kids, a dog, my wife and I, and you know, manage as best we can. Hell yeah, dude! The the picture perfect family right here in front of me, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, <laughs> we're working on it. <laughs> um, so with that, you know, yeah, what's what do you think is like the next big thing outside? Obviously, the next biggest thing is you guys have another kid. Yeah, but like, you know, with this, we talked about your past. You know, your, your schooling, clothes repair, college, and shit, and like now careers. Yeah. Um, where do you see this whole thing moving forward next with your life, um, as yourself and with your family? Yeah, I would say in some ways, I hope it stabilizes a little bit just cause it's been so crazy the past couple of years. Um, at the same time, I'm looking forward to it just continuing to evolve. I mean, 
we talked about it just over a 10 year period, how much has changed, like my outlooks on life, my perceptions of different things, how, you know, I wasn't all that interested in learning things to now I just want to try to soak in everything. Like what's it going to look like in 10 years from now as well. So I don't know. I would say like just continuing to develop, um, you know, as a full family personally, I want to continue to, you know, grow more, um, in a lot of ways, just personally, uh, you know, what I do at home, what I do at my job, like just become more well-rounded, I think is what I'm searching for. Nice dude. Yeah. Good stuff. With, uh, you mentioned that 10 year mark. Let's just go right into that question. (laughs) What, what do you, do you want to put anything on the table uh, for any predictions of what's going to happen in the next 10 years? Uh, yeah, I could put a few out there. I mean, um, we talked about working on, on our house. I would like to have that maybe not fully done. I mean, it's crazy <laughs> to think about in 10 years, but we, when I say not fully done, like eventually we'll probably want to replace the roof. Um, we'll probably want to maybe do something with the, um, with the siding hopefully the inside is done in 10 years i mean yeah (laughs) we did a lot in one year so i'm i'm hoping we can uh (laughs) well in the next 10 years so yeah yeah. i'd like to have a um you know a more finished house that we can all be able to relax and enjoy and spend time in so that's one of the things um talking about like growing i mean i became more um a lot more interest in finance personal finance really and mm-hmm. becoming like I don't know just uh in a good position so I'd like to I'll throw this out there it's going to be challenging but just own my house fully with in the next 10 years um nice we'll have you know obviously two kids maybe there'll be a, another one or two in there as well in 10 years so um and then I, I would also just say from a career standpoint I mean I've I've been very blessed with you know, what I've done in the, I guess, first five years that I've worked, I like to be able to continue on that path. Just, uh, I mean, just continuing to learn more. Um, there's, yeah, I mean, like we talked about in supply chain or in my job, there's a lot to supply chain. I think there's a lot of areas that I could go into that are a little bit different than what I'm doing now. So just looking at, you know, expanding you know my knowledge of the different things that go on in in a business I think is another thing I'd like to do um I'm also interested in getting my uh a master's I I think that's just another way I like to be able to soak in some more things from yeah I don't know someone teaching it to me I guess a little bit but I don't know those are just a few things that I've had on my list um Hey man, that list never stops growing. I'm, I know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I had things to my list of things I'm going to do. And it's like, fuck, I didn't get that done. And I got three more on it now yeah. too. If you ask Heather, I always tell her like when I retire, I'm going to, and I'd like to do a lot of things before I retire. It's just finding time, prioritizing the things I want to do. But my list of things I want to do is just so long. Like I tell her, I want to learn how to play piano. I play the guitar. I want to, learn a new language then another one after that yeah i want to like build furniture and fix cars and tractors and stuff <laughs> it's like i'm yeah. gonna have time to do all this stuff yeah I don't, I don't know man we'll see it's it's awesome though right there's so many things that you could can do yeah right and like the opportunities are endless yeah. and if you're enjoying it along the way what the hell yeah. that's all that matters you know something that also has really got my interest lately which We grew up out in the country, but I never had really got into hunting or fishing. It was just something my my family never did much. Mm -hmm. Um, I started getting into it more, watching a few shows, um, like on Netflix and stuff. And I don't know why it just has struck a chord with me. Like, yeah, it like I don't know. It's just something I also could see like myself wanting to get into more and even traveling to you know go do some stuff like that. So. I don't know. That's another thing. But also related to that, I mean, we talked a little bit also at one point, like just how the world's been so crazy. Like I'd like to be able to just be able to support myself more from like what we're able to produce, like Mm -hmm. have a nice garden, like 
have a few animals that we raise and then butcher and then have for ourselves like if the whole rest of the world's going to shit like at least we can kind of be self-sustainable in some ways and yeah dude you know at least have that uh as a backup <laughs> i think that's something else that's in a little bit instinctual within our dna like the pride we get from you know building a house or just working yeah you know when you can cultivate your own food supply for your family you know, that's something else that is that's something that you just like yeah go and look at your garden you're like oh hell yeah dude. yeah i agree <laughs> with that they're like yeah that yeah that's all that's all this is our fresh meat this is yeah. our fresh food see i think sometimes i just feel like a wuss almost because i'm like <laughs> when i think about my parents and my grandparents and my great-grandparents like they would they would you know raise all their animals they would butcher they would you know like use the casing to make their own bratwurst instead of like going somewhere and getting casing and stuff like that. And I'm like, I feel like we hardly do any of this anymore. Like we, yeah. we find it so easy to go to a grocery store. We don't have time to do it. And it's just like, I don't know. It's like those type of things are things I don't want to lose. Like, cause if I try to go out and do something like that now, like I would muddle my way through it. Like it would take me way too long. I just want to, I want to be able to have that knowledge and then also pass it along just because it's, it's, I don't know, I guess going back to knowing how to do stuff like a trade, like it's always something that you can have and know how to do. So yeah. I think it probably is a lot of DNA, what we've seen done. Yeah. Um, I don't know why, maybe it's crazy to think that it's necessary or needed, but it's I something I just find interesting. Yeah. Still. Yeah, for sure. And dude, I mean, we are soft in comparison to generations <laughs> back. That's a hundred percent sure. And I don't know. Do you I think it's a bad thing. No, I, I mean, do you think it's bad that we just go to the grocery store? Like it's easier. Like maybe that helps people have more joy in their life. Or? Yes and no. Yeah. yeah, I think with the joy, the more joy and opportunities it brings, it also brings more of a. Um, I was just thinking this today actually because. So backtrack on that thought. Somebody told my dad that he was like, some guy from New Orleans was like, hey, oh yeah, I saw your son's videos and stuff. Looks like he's traveling the world. That's awesome. Yeah. And he's like, dude, you know, more power to these younger people doing this stuff. He's like, because when we were younger, we, we, we never even thought about it. So he's like, oh, that's awesome. You know, that's what this life's about. You know, go enjoying the things that you can do. But with this new age of, you know, the internet and, uh, like in your job, you're talking to suppliers around the world yeah. and like this whole thing of like us every day are more interconnected with the rest of the world Yeah, brings in way more opportunities to do more. But back in the day, like that wasn't even an option. Yeah. Like people started their family and lived on their farm and that was it. Yeah. Like they weren't exposed to the rest of the world. Yeah. And with everything, with the internet and s social media and just photos and Instagram, and just Instagram alone, you see photos from around the world instantly. Yeah. You just were never exposed to it. Yeah. So I think it, with it getting better, it brings more opportunity for people to do stuff like that, but yeah. also brings more stress of like this anxiety and like people have more of this existential like, thoughts of like what do what do i need to be doing with my life yeah and like because there's so many things i can do yeah and we're back in the day it was like you just didn't have to think about it because like dude i just need to get food on my plate for my family yeah so like it also limited you but like people were still happy back then right yeah so like this whole definition of happiness is kind of strung out to being like <laughs> well how do i find happiness because yeah. i have infinite infinite amount of possibilities and it stresses me the fuck out <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a good point i could definitely see that yeah and so it's like it's probably there's nothing wrong with like wanting to be more connected to the roots because yeah. like if you find joy in it then fuck it why you know yeah why not see i think that's where i've tried to find a balance too like um i was telling heather this just the other day like it kind of hits me a lot where like on Friday, yesterday, for example, like I talked to someone in France. I talked to someone that's Polish. I talked to someone that's Mexican in Mexico. I talked to plenty of people in the U.S. Like just in one day, I talked to four different nationalities of people. 
And I'm like, that's crazy. And it's crazy that I can do that like every day. That's a big reason why I like what I do, just because I get to connect with a lot of people like that. Um, but I was also going to say uh, there is one, not just one time, but one time in particular I was thinking of, I had organized the call and it had people in the U.S., China, Malaysia, Korea, um, Brazil, Germany, uh, Luxembourg. There was like, I counted like 10 different countries on this phone call that I had organized. And I'm sitting in Uruguay, Ohio, leading this call. And I'm like, it just kind of blows my mind. Like, I'm doing this from my house, like talking to all these people at once from halfway around the world. And I think it's amazing. But then at the same time, that's where I want to get back to like, but also like, I still want to be able to retain like, you know, what, you know, the knowledge that's out there from, you know, predecessors in the area for my family, like, yeah, that type of stuff too. I guess the balance of both is what I've been trying to look to do. Yeah. And it's (laughs) like we said, man, it's just harder, right? Cause now, now we have both in this whole thing of yeah. connect of hey holding on to the past is extremely important and like understanding history and knowing how things work and then this progression of technology and the world is moving at such a fast pace and we're a part of it for our careers and like meeting new people and yeah. see just in general seeing the world and it's just like uh, it's stretching everybody thin. Yeah, <laughs> it, is. it is. I mean, we were just talking about all the things that we want to do. It's like, yeah, which one do we focus on? Like, how do we know when to start one and then stop it to go on to something else? Like, uh, we just hope that we live to be like 160, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all yeah. right, I got another 130 years, so I think I can do a lot in that time. Yeah, <laughs> good old farmers yeah. down home. Did they intend to take the picture just like the American Gothic? Yeah. I don't I don't know. <laughs> Saying it's probably a hundred year years old. I would guess yes, but maybe not. <laughs> maybe it was just like a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought about it actually. I wonder when that painting was done. I have no idea. Who painted American Gothic anyway? That's one thing I haven't been as interested in is artwork. I never have. Yeah. I don't know why. It just never has interested me that much. Here's Great. my here's my pieces of works. They're <laughs> <laughs> <Really> good. <laughs> uh, not bad, but they could get better. <laughs> <laughs> I like the desert one. I can't claim that one. That's actually Morgan's. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty sharp. Yeah. I thought we were going to paint actually more when we were home, but dude, these last four weeks that we've been home have going by. fucking just going by so fast. Mostly with us planning this wedding. Yeah. It's taking them up so much time. Yeah. Did you find out the year? 1930. Grant Wood. Hey, shit, that had to be about at the same time. Yeah. Maybe that's it, uh, who you had in <laughs> mind. Maybe this is the original. <laughs> yeah. Shit, stop selling this. This is the original American Gothic. <laughs> That's awesome. You'd probably get some traction with that if yeah. you figured out when it was done. Like yeah. if it was 1929. <laughs> yeah. I'd su- I'd start suing people and we'll start doing. <laughs> this is <laughs> we have the original. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So where were we at? <clears throat> you were talking about um oh yeah, y- y- your experience of having a meeting with everybody around the world. Yeah. Uh, we talked about this couple weeks ago but i want to put on the record a little bit too of you talking about these interesting people from around the world that you've worked with yeah can you go in a little bit uh about the one person (laughs) i don't want to butcher the explanation of it but i think i hope you know what i'm talking about you're explaining that this person uh was from north korea actually are you allowed are you allowed to talk about this at all yeah (laughs) i mean i don't know but (laughs) yeah so uh yeah, I found out this person uh, lives, grew up in a different country, um, and he identifies with that country. But uh, I was then told that his family was actually from North Korea, mm-hmm. and they left North Korea at some point and moved to this this new country. And when I when I was told that, I was just like 
completely mind blown. Like I've talked to plenty of people around the world, but I mean, no one from North Korea or had, you know, yeah, you know, descended from there. So it was, uh, it was quite the, quite interesting to find that out. Um, dude, it's just nuts, dude. Like, yeah. Like you said, just from us, from 300 or population of 300 people. Yeah. Ohio. Yeah. To start having conversations and finding out that you're on a meeting <laughs> with somebody that was originally from North Korea yeah. who escaped their, that regime. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Has there been any other people that you found fascinating through your work um, or with working with somebody, has it like opened up your interest of their country more so than what you've ever thought about before? Yeah. Uh, pretty much every person I talk to that's from a different <laughs> country, I, yeah. I want to learn more about them. Um, I I was going to tell one story. I think I told you before. I had taken a trip to Vietnam, and uh, and one of the people that met us there, he he was he he's actually Chinese, but um, normally the Chinese have a Chinese name, and then they also use like a American name. Um, and his American name that he uses is Carl. And he said, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's based on Karl Marx. And I was like, wow, I'm not in the U S anymore. <laughs> like, and so, it, I mean, that was just crazy. Like that, that was just one of the neatest trips I've been on or neatest things I've done just cause it completely opened up my eyes to something different. But going back to your point, I mean, I think any, any, person I've talked to from a different country I've I always like to try to learn more about them like um one of the new people I've been working with she's Polish and I don't know much about Poland so I always you know try to ask like a little bit about it not like spend 20 minutes just talking about Poland but yeah I'm um, just trying to you know get a little bit more knowledge here or there um I think you know a lot of the people I work with I'd like to you know go out for a drink with them and spend an hour or dinner like talking with them just about their life and you know their culture their experiences because there is only so much you can get into like when you're trying to do your work um and most of it's over like a team's video call so i find it does add more when you actually get to see them face to face like um i found that to add a lot of benefit i uh i was always like when i first got into purchasing I was kind of like I mean is it really a benefit to fly halfway across the world to meet with these people or to meet with different people and mm -hmm. after taking one trip I completely understood why like you just really build those relationships more face to face for some reason like I think it strengthens it like you you build some more trust and in, in each other um so yeah it's it's been interesting yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, like even, you know, not discounting the relationships at all, like a hundred percent, that's probably like, I would say that's the most important thing for a, a professional setting. Yeah. But for my personal perspective of just like what I like to see happen when you go to a new place around the world is just like your worldview expansion Yeah. of like, you know, yeah, this thing it exists like say you went to Vietnam yeah but you had no like firsthand <laughs> really perception of what that Vietnam thing is yeah so when you went there and I imagine it's like what it is every time I go somewhere it's like yeah I think it's like this and then you go there but now it's like expanded to be like oh now I actually have a memory and something that goes on in my head when I hear Vietnam now because I know this whole like that machine over there is running yeah. and working with millions of people. And I was there and saw it firsthand. Yeah. So right. it's, it's so cool to see. And then like now every time that comes up and I'm assuming I don't want to, I don't want to put that in like your, in your head, yeah. like to say if it's not true, but like now when someone says Vietnam, I would imagine that like you go, yeah, dude. And then you have like this, 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 this that you think of instantly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, um, one of the things I just thought of when you were talking there was like we went over there and they have these machines and they say product for Cooper, product for Goodyear, whatever it may be. And it's like, geez, we're halfway around the world and like you can see this stuff's for us. Yeah. But then going back to another point, um, 
sense. For me, it's just completely like, I don't know. A lot of times I think about like growing up in a small town, like I never could have imagined like talking with people around the world like this and getting to do these types of things. And I think it's completely just expanded my perception. I think it, it, it helps a lot when you get to meet new people, understand like where they're coming from. I think in a lot of ways you, if you're open and, and you, you know, you can build a good line of communication and, um, you know, uh, working a relationship with basically anyone if, you know, if you're open to it and, and, you know, yeah, that's what it should be. I mean, even outside yeah. of a work relationship, um, yeah. Say you've met, met this person outside of work and you've, you had a conversation at a bar and he talks about him name himself Carl after Carl Marx. Yeah. You know, I a hundred percent, I don't think that should instantly make you go like, Oh, fuck this guy first. No. <laughs> you know, if, the, if that was like a belief, a support yeah. for Marxism, yeah. it should be like, well, you know, you're coming from a completely different perspective yeah. on government structures and like yeah. how the world works and what my, my, my small experience has been. Yeah. Um, where, you know, Maybe you have someone from the U.S. who's pro-capitalist or for someone who's pro-Marxism. Yeah, it's like you know you can still get along on a personal level outside of a work relationship yeah. and you get to understand of like why they have a different worldview. Yeah, which is still awesome. Yeah, it is. I think in most cases, I found that most people like they're they're good inside or want to do what's right. Like they, whatever job they're in, they want to you know do what's best for the company they're working for. So yeah, I feel like. Yeah, I feel like it's really just expanded my perception of everything, getting to work with different people and understanding what they're actually like other than just, you know, reading an article or seeing something, you know, on on the news or, you yeah. know, different things, actually getting to see it and talk with people from, you know, wherever it may be is is yeah, is huge. Dude, the, the older I get, the more I realize that ev- everything – whether I support it with my beliefs or don't support it, everything is propaganda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I feel like the, like the more I look, like see stuff. And then also with, um, getting exposed to mother world news, it's like, you kind of go, it's kind of the same shit there too. And it's, it's all propaganda fed. Yeah. Like it's either in support of this or how do I, trash that thing as much as possible because i don't support it (laughs) yeah yeah that's a good point i mean you're right i think everything's like that (laughs) i watched this show it was called mad men it was basically like advertising and marketing in like the 1950s and it was it was a drama show it was not factual but yeah um i'm sure it was based on facts of some yeah but it was just like how how like you know creating a sign like is supposed to draw on these people and then you know change the way they look at this product to make them buy it like just how that whole process is i mean it's all propaganda like yeah how you know what people are creating to make you believe something um (laughs) yeah subconsciously yeah (laughs) (laughs) and then you dude i've i don't remember who i talked about before on this on the show was maybe it was amy where we're talking about like social media and stuff and ads on social media. Yeah. And like, you know, we start consuming more and more content. Yeah. And then the way the algorithm works with your social media consumption is like, are you consuming this because of what the algorithm's feeding you? Or are you consuming this because you want to? And then you start questioning is like, well, do I only <laughs> want this because it was pushed to me? Yeah. Like, you know, like how do you like, and then like you, after years of us being exposed to like this, nonstop ads, propaganda, and, yeah. like, culture, whatever culture is being pushed down our throats is, like, is it because I wanted it? Or is it because, like, some com- AI computer bot, like, <laughs> thought that I wanted it, and then I just was like, yeah, I guess I like this. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, like, kind of, like, this weird thing that it's, like, I think of and, like, struggle with. It's like, <laughs> so what is my identity then? <laughs> you know, like, what do I enjoy or do I do I think I enjoy this? Yeah. <laughs> it's, how uh, do you zone out things like that? Like, how do, you, how do you keep to make sure that you are thinking about things with your own opinion versus something that <laughs> may be getting fed to you? It's hard, man, because 
I, all we, I think if you think of anything that we know is all learned. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like, even if it's opinion, it's like, I have this opinion because I read a book <laughs> that someone else wrote. Yeah. Right. Or like, I yeah. read this article that someone else talked about it and I go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also if you don't read that thing, then how do you ever know anything about it to make an opinion? Yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of like messes with your head a little bit. Yeah. Like kind of like, you know, but it, so like what makes us unique, right? <laughs> I guess like the fact of like these hundred and one things and maybe like that one hundred and one first thing is like something completely different than you, even though we have like yeah. the other baseline of being the exact same. Yeah. I don't know. Well there's I mean, obviously there's gotta be something different in everyone because Yeah. Let's yeah. I mean, we're probably fed most of the same stuff through different means. Yeah, that's like, true. And so then everyone still makes their own, you know, different perceptions. But I guess going back to the algorithm, like you know, whatever you're getting into, then that's going to be met more yeah. fed to you than yeah. someone else. I Cause guess. we all start the exact same way, right? Yeah. We're born without any knowledge given to us. Yeah. And then eventually with what has been fed to us from our parents and like from nature yeah. and schooling, you, know, you kind of follow this path. And then all of a sudden you get like this person over here and this person over here. Yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting. And yeah. then you kind of question like, as this path continues to grow, like, is it because I'm in this echo chamber already <laughs> and this is why I enjoy it and believe it? Yeah. And like, but I guess that's where it comes where you just have to look at things with open mind, right? Yeah. Where you gotta like have conversations yeah. and see if someone can change your pr- mind is, yeah. is like the only way you can do it. Yeah. I was just thinking a lot about Merrick. Like, I mean, he's, he's not even two years old yet. And to see like, he can't necessarily say what he's interested in like say it but he can kind of show you what he's interested in like he's picked up so quickly like on the construction stuff we're doing to the house like he'll pick up a hammer and try to hammer on something like we have a toy hammer for him and he'll go up to the trim work in the house and like see where the nail's at and hit on the nail (laughs) and then he'll find like spots in the wall that like maybe I didn't drywall there's still like I drywalled it but there's still like a blemish in it like he'll point it out like those type (laughs) of things it's like like he's obviously watched us but also like there's something in him that he's like he knows when it's not you know the way it should be like he's interested in trying to hammer something like yeah he could be interested in i don't know something different yeah so it's and like he's not getting fed any of the yeah you know there's so much of an observation yeah. Of, of a kid like that where you yeah gotta see it's like dude just, i'm just, i'm like you, where you're watching this person's mind like <laughs> grow right in front of you yeah <laughs> and yeah uh, it's, it's true it's interesting you know like he could completely be disinterested in the the uh house remodel 100 yeah. percent, right and yeah. be like hey he only wants to play with a dog yeah he doesn't care at all about it, but for some reason he's uh, yeah interested in like picking up the toy tools and stuff. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> we'll start kind of closing this thing up, all right? Sounds good. We'll maybe go up and and have a drink at left field after this if that works out. Yeah, that works for me. Um, on the topic of society as a whole and connecting it to your job, um, also with the outlook in the future. Have you, does, do you guys have the conversation or have you had the thought of with your company being a product that's directly related to crude oil, Hmm. gasoline, energy, you know, it's a byproduct or also a dual product from energy. Yeah. Um, with the whole world moving towards electric energy and electric vehicles and less oil production in general. If we continue going down that path, um, I guess the al- alternative is the ga- the price of tires would go up hmm. because there's less product to be purchased. Yeah. Or the other alternative is like, is there an, a potential alternative to fossil fa- fossil fuel based 
tires, rubber. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys, have you ever had like that conversation? Is there like a whole, any side of the company that's like, Hey, we need, is there anything going on about like, is there different materials that could be purchased to not be from a crude oil product yeah. uh, and try to like do a different mixture for tires or rubber manufacturing like that? Yeah, I would say there's a huge focus on that right now. There's a lot of work being done um, that I've seen to look at different alternatives. I think there's there's a lot of pressure on that for, for good reason to see like, you know, what else could be done differently other than what's been done in the past. Mm -hmm. Um. I think, like, in some ways, the one thing I think is cool is, like, they're looking for ways to use soybean oil instead of crude oil. Um, so that's, a, you know, a good way to just continuously, you know, grow grow crops and produce it into oil that could replace crude oil. Mm -hmm. um, that's just one example. There's a lot of other areas. It may be, like, recycling a portion of a tire back into building an entire um, recycling, like, a a steel product back into you know the raw material to produce the products that we need there's a lot of focus on on it um i that's also something that has been really interesting for me to see like just the different alternatives that are out there um i think then it also comes down to like the cost what it's going to cost to be able to do that um but i feel like the world's definitely moving in that direction and I think it's going to continue to have a big focus going forward. I mean, probably in the next, I don't know, probably in the next five years, it's going to change a lot. In the next 10 years, it's going to be a lot different from where it is now. Do you have any, you know, out of the ball field, like predictions of what might be of like what a base composition of a tire might change to? <laughs> <laughs> uh that's a good question there's probably a lot of alternatives uh that are out there um i i probably not the best person to answer that yeah i was just curious because it's something like you know they're completely like yeah i don't know could be something completely different yeah than what we've ever even thought of someone yeah. who's so who's smarter than us will come across with something and figure out how to you know, like whether it be completely recycle, like, hey, let's 100% recyclable <laughs> material. We can reuse yeah. the stuff over and over again. Yeah. And some fashion. Yeah. And maybe also like the whole, the whole construction of a tire could change also. Like I've seen different tires that don't even have a sidewall or need air. They're more so like uh, there's different flanges that kind of hold the bead to the tread area. Oh, interesting. Um, so it's like, yeah, there's the, the whole of idea of, of tires could be completely <laughs> reimagined in 10 years. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> everything will be hovercraft, no tires. Yeah, um, <laughs> you probably still need to land at some point, though. That's true. Yeah, maybe I would say tires are probably going to be around for a very long time. Yeah, or at least, um, in some capacity yeah. where <laughs> it just won't be an industry to cease to exist in 15 or 30 years yeah. even. Probably if I would continue in the industry, I would think for my career, they will, the world won't completely move away from tires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, all right, man. Okay, right, let's, let's go. Let's wrap up and, and kind of go into some uh, main show topics. All right. Yeah. Um, I want to go into three different things and that first being h hobbies and how that fits in your life today because um you're a huge fan of baseball you have been yeah. your entire life um is there any hobbies that you still hold today that you really enjoy and really want to make sure that are part of your life and um how do you manage to make sure that that's a priority with you yeah. know the house remodel work kids everything else like how does that still yeah. play in the, the factors i would say when i was younger i was a big sports fan as i've gotten older i've kind of realized that there's other important things that i that has lessened my uh desire to you know follow sports baseball is still is the thing that i follow mostly um for some reason it just strikes a chord with me i'm i've always been interested 
I will say I'm not completely satisfied with the way Major League Baseball is run right now. I think it's become too political. I think there's a lot of things that could be changed about it. Um, How I just, so? Well, I mean, I guess what I always say is I watch baseball because I want to enjoy it. I want to get away from the things in the world that you know causes stress and anxiety for most people. I want to watch the game to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um and lately they've they've gotten away from that a little bit like um i mean obviously the politics in the in the u.s has been crazy and it's kind of bled over to baseball and and what they've done um i think last year during covid when everything was shut down um baseball was one of the upcoming seasons that was going to start and they had an opportunity to uh I guess from what I know, like I don't know the details of what was all being discussed, but I thought they had an opportunity to really regain a lot of viewership that they've been losing because no other sports were on. They could have, you know, been that that thing for people to watch. And it came down to basically the players' union, the players arguing with the owners. So the billionaires arguing with the millionaires because the players wanted the full salary for 162 games, even though they're playing 60. And the owners are like, yeah, but we're, we can't even have any fans in the stands. We're not going to be making money um, from that. So it's like they're just arguing. And mm -hmm. yet, you know, true baseball fans are sitting here like, let's play some ball. <laughs> like, yeah. So it's just like over the past couple of years, I, I can't say I've been happy with how that's gone. I mean, the game of baseball itself is something that is I still love, and I've kind of started to focus a little bit more on college baseball, which hasn't been anything I've really been as interested in. But um, I hope they get it straightened out and yeah, come a little bit more. It's unfortunate, man. Uh, money makes things way easier and better for a lot of people, but then it also Makes everything a pain in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, we just like, where it becomes so much of a fixation of any decision that gets made has to be made around a profit motive yeah. of some capacity. Yep. It does. So, I, I do think going forward, like, that's always going to be something I'm interested in. I mean, probably not now as much as it once was for me, but something that still will be. Um, I think one of my, I guess you could call it hobbies is I've always been around the farm and work with my dad and grandpa, my brother, um, on, on the acres that we farm. I'd, I plan to continue doing that. Um, it's, it's something that as we talked about, you know, earlier on where are doing things like, like, like that is something that is interesting to continue to be able to have that knowledge of and do. So I think that's definitely something, um, something I'll continue on with. Um, Do you think that you'll go out and continue expanding to farm more through your life, like buy f more farmland and do more and more of it as, as you get older? Or is it one of those things where like maybe more of a self-contained, like more of like being a part of the family and doing it with your whole family still? Yeah. That's a good question. I mean, for me, I've got a, the main job I have a lot of focus on. I think continuing with the amount that we've done is, I guess you could call a good amount for us to do on as our side job. Yeah. Um. Still like, still enjoy the kind of work that we've done on the farm side and and continue on with it. So, I guess if I were to answer you right now, I would say maybe expand it in some ways if it makes sense, if possible. But um. But not actively trying to yeah make that more and more part of your life and time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll see in the next 10, 20 years if... Uh, yeah, if things if make sense, makes right? Sense, yeah. um, I'd much rather do that than the work I'm doing in some ways. I mean, I've talked a lot about why I like doing what I do, and I think I kind of miss that in some ways, but... it's. Like we said earlier, man, it's always the decisions that are going on in our head of, yeah. <laughs> do we want to go back to the roots and kind of just be here? Do we want to be connected to this big machine and yeah. and do things over here and here and here? 
And yeah, you're all, those are the same questions that we're going to ask our entire yeah. lives. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I feel like it's with us. Be, we're, we're just so exposed yeah. to everything. Just even watching TV, yeah. you know, you're going to know other things are going to go on. Yeah. So nice, yeah. man. So I think it continue with those hobbies, obviously as the family gets bigger, I'm sure we'll develop new family hobbies and then probably later in life I'll need to, f- find ways to keep myself busy and develop new hobbies. So yeah, good stuff, dude. Yeah. Um, as I take a sip on beer right before I ask a question, <laughs> uh, I think we've touched on it a little bit throughout, but I want to, let's get a for sure definition of from you. Yeah. How, how would you define success, Josh? Uh, you know, I know you ask this question all the time and I've thought about it a lot and I know you'll probably ask me another question later that I've also (laughs) thought about a lot. I don't know what the right answers are. I think for the question of success, um, I know a lot of people say happiness and I agree with that. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can do and figuring out what we want to do to feel like we're successful. I think just one word that comes to mind also is just having freedom, freedom to do what we want, like financial freedom to do what we want, freedom to travel where we want, um, just freedom to do whatever we want, I think allows you to, you know, should allow you to have the happiness and success in life that you are looking to have. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. But yeah, I guess I'm still searching for what success means also because <laughs> yeah. I'm probably defining it differently every day. I think that's why it's an interesting question, mostly yeah. for the sake of us recording this conversation is a, is a fun way to document a, a thought that you had in time yeah. because I do think that most of these questions are uh, um, in the sense like, not really necessary to have an answer yeah. because they're always going to change and can have different with meanings with everybody. Yeah. And like you said, you, you can define it one way today and maybe in a year or two years from now, you'll look at it a little different. You know, it's like, man, this is, I, I think this is what I would call success Yeah, and it can be ever changing. So it's and fun I, to like have it in a point in time. Yeah. I think to add one thing to that from a little bit different stance is, I, I don't know if it's normal. A lot of times I think of, like, when I'm older, like, what am I going to tell my grandkids? Like, <laughs> this one's a little bit more morbid, but, like, when I pass away, like, who's going to be at my funeral? Like, what are they going to say about me, like, about my life? Yeah. Like, how do I, how do I, what do I do throughout life, you know, to paint that picture? And I guess I've always wanted to, when I'm older, like, I because I've always enjoyed, like, listening to older folks like talk stories about their life and I want to be able to also like tell someone about my experiences in the end and and hopefully they enjoy that (laughs) yeah no 100% Darwin's down here getting a beer (laughs) no I'm good thanks thanks though how's it taste (laughs) uh yeah, man, 100%. Be, uh, I agree because it's an important thing to think about because it helps just give you self-reflection on yeah. your actions. and Like what I'm doing yeah. right now. Ultimately, I think if you're putting happiness out there in the world, that's what matters because that impact is going to be on yeah. everybody at your final days, final days and then we'll live on past you. Yeah. You know? even if they don't think about us in like the sense of like our names and our, our legacies or whatever, yeah. you know, as long as you put happiness out into other people and that live, that will live on with their experiences of being positive going forward. Yeah. I agree with that. And, um, I, I mean, going back to what we've talked about too, just with different people that I get to interact with from around the world, I hope they have good perceptions of the way I act and, present myself and how that reflects back on me and the company and really the country. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of just like, I want to make sure, and I always tried to make sure that I'm, I'm working in a respectable way 
yeah. um, so that they, you know, enjoy working with me and, and, you know, have a good perception of, you know, everything that is involved. Yeah. It's interesting to say that you, uh, could, or anybody can be, <laughs> when you're talking on country to countries yeah. on how big of a scale that is, but it's true. Yeah. I, like uh, people, we did it the same way when we were talking about people that you worked with from Vietnam or, or yeah. Brazil or whatever. It was like, you know, we said their, con- their country of origin as their explanation. Yeah. So like that description was now tied to, to their country yeah, and vice versa with them probably talking about you is like, <laughs> Hey, this, this kid from the U S yeah. Right. So if, if he's like a dick, then it's yeah. like, dude, I'm, I'm going to have a negative connotation of that country now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, that's it. I mean, like if I'm like, I don't want them to think I'm an asshole. The U.S. is an asshole. Like yeah. that kind of stuff. But a lot of it then comes back to like just your culture, like how you would do something compared to how they would do something. Like that's where it's also important to understand like how they act. Mm-hmm. Um like the one thing I I was in a meeting recently um with some people from Asia and it was a difficult meeting and uh and at one point the one guy goes and gets his scarf and they had I don't know it was kind of cold in the room but one of my colleagues in Asia on my side he's like boy he was not happy with the way he got his scarf and wrapped it around and it's just like taking cues like that of how people how people react and how they present themselves. But yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. It is. And I think it comes back to just if we can try to be positive and not negative and yeah, that will, you're, you're, especially with your position and your, your career right now of, you know, that impacts on really a global scale, which is funny to say. <laughs> um, yeah. Even as uh, not to sound like narcissistic or anything like that, you know, yeah. or not to put that on you. Yeah, but like you know, it's it's if, as long as you try to be a good person, people will realize that, and that's that's what matters. Yeah, and then uh, and then I mean to that point too, though I also think about how small we are in the grand scheme of things. Like, am I like one person making that big of an impact? But I guess it's it's just doing what I think is right and respectable and things yeah. like that. Yeah, man. But if uh. A hundred million people had that perspective. I think the world <laughs> might be a better place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I sent you a book last week, two yeah. weeks ago. Did you start reading it at all? I started it. It's not hurting my feelings if you don't. I did start it. I haven't read. I probably read 20 pages or so. I was just curious because I took notes when I read it. And... I am going to read, I don't know which one I wanted to read. I was going to read a, okay, I like this one. I took like my key takeaways from the book. So the book was The Almanac of Naval Ravikant and George Basile, my good friend, recommended it to me and I got a a lot of good takeaways from it. I think it's got a a lot of good outlooks on life. So here is one on this statement of all I want to I want to read it to you basically and I want to get your thoughts on it just from your lived experience to see if you agree with it disagree with it and just kind of like where your head goes okay sure so it's uh be in an eternal state of revolution you should always be internally ready ready for a complete change whenever we say we're going to try to do something or try to form a habit we're wimping out when you tell yourself you're going to buy more time, the reality is when our emotions want us to do something, we just do it. So what do you think on that? I think at the start of it, I wish I was a little bit more ready to make changes, be a change in some ways. I think I feel like in some ways I get stuck in just doing what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know. I don't know if being complacent is the right word, but maybe not feeling ready to make a big change, like moving to Brazil or something like that. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I said, dude, I'm not reading it as like a a good thing or like a perspective that you should have by any means. 
Yeah. Yeah. So you be my more means. If you think you disagree with that perspective, I'd I'd be willing to hear it. I don't. I don't. I don't think I disagree with it. That. <laughs> That's fine. Because I think. Because I think the more you get outside of your comfort zone and do different things, the more you, you know, become more well-rounded. Yeah. So I think if you're doing, if you're making changes um, to learn more and grow more, um, that's a good thing. I think if you just stay complacent, let's say, and yeah, are not doing anything differently then what's going to change in your life? Like you'll just continue to do the same things that you have done without, you know, getting any new experiences. I, yes, I think that I, the one I hear that quote after, I also like ask for a response off the fly, which is (laughs) kind of hard. Yeah. So I'm not like trying to put you on the spot because, you know, I've, I, I took that as a note because it made me think, the same way like you did on the spot where it's like, yeah, is this a good thing? Is this not a good thing? Yeah. Is change good? And, and where I ultimately came to it was, um, is there a decision in your life that you're not doing because of your current situation? Yeah. And ultimately you got to ask yourself is which one do you want more? Yeah. If your current situation is what you want more then bury the other thing and stop like, yeah suffering and being in pain from like this desire because if you like this thing more than that thing that you, is holding on a pedestal in your brain <laughs> then it's not then it's it's fake you, you you have a false sense of what you actually want yeah and the other thing is if you want that thing more than your current situation then you should just do it yeah and don't feel like you're held to like your job because this other job sounds better. Yeah. Ultimately, you got to ask yourself, which one's better for you? And if it's your current one, then stay in doing it, and then, then fucking forget about the other one. If yeah. it's the other one, then quit your job and go to that one. That's what I d- got out of yeah. it. And it's just like a matter of, like, if you come to a, a point in your life where you're having those conversations with yourself and questioning A or B, um, and you really sit down and think between those if it has to be an a or b just decide which one it is and then forget about the other one yeah and sometimes i think with that decision change will come and you shouldn't be afraid of it and sometimes change doesn't come and then you should stop stressing yourself out about it (laughs) because dude i'm always thinking about shit all the time like am i doing the right thing am i doing the wrong thing and i know i stress out over so much little shit that i should just be like this is what I'm doing. This is what I want to do. So fucking who yeah. gives a shit about everything else? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good perspective. So I don't know. It's just fun to think about. And it's like, yeah. I, I think that's what a lot of people should do. Yeah. And maybe it's probably along the same lines of like us at like talking about holding the roots again, going, looking yeah. back of our past and going forward, you know? Yeah. What, what, which ones do you want to do? And then just go ahead and do them. And yeah. And uh, that's all there is to it. Yeah. And then if you realize that you don't do them, that's fine too. Just don't do them then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that goes kind of goes back to your previous question about success. And I guess what leads you on that path to your definition of successful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just sitting here. Thinking yeah, that. no, it's fine. <laughs> I say it just as like a little dead silence, which is totally fine because it's what like, page is that on anyway? I don't know. Oh. I I take note. So like, what, I I thought it was interesting in the book. It said like this doesn't need to be read in chronological order. Like you can, if you see a section that is interesting to you, just skip to that section and read it. Yeah. Or like you know, go from here to here to here. So yeah, because it, it, and that's like I don't I just like. I don't know. I read that book so fast because, I mean, I don't have a job. So <laughs> <laughs> I can just read for six hours a day sometimes. Um, but, like, I when I read stuff, like any book, I take photos of the pages that yeah. I find particularly interesting to me. Yeah. And then I'll take those photos, and then I'll go online and, like, type a Google Doc out with all of my notes and thoughts on them. Yeah. 
So that's cool. Just to like kind of summarize it and let me go back on like the really points that yeah that I thought were the most interesting to me. That way I can go back to my comments and notes without having to go back to the entire book. Yeah. But yeah, uh, that author's whole perspective on book reading and learning is like, dude, if you don't, if this doesn't interest you, if you think the book sucks, like (laughs) just don't finish it and move on with your life. Yeah. Which is, I find hard for myself. Uh, If I start a book, I feel like I I need to finish this. I need to accomplish (laughs) this book. I don't care if it's tough read. And his perspective is, dude, if it fucking sucks, put it down. Who cares? (laughs) There's millions and millions of other things you could be doing. Yeah. Why waste your time on a book that you're not enjoying? Yeah. I do the same thing though. Like I, <laughs> there's been a few books I can think of where I just like have, gosh, I need to finish this book, but I dread reading it because then it takes me like I don't know if you add up all the time, like how long it took me to read this <laughs> book when I could have been doing something else, yeah. reading a different book. Mm-hmm. Especially because the book you're not enjoying as much, it takes way longer. Yeah, <laughs> to read because you go like the pages dread on, and you go, yeah, oh, I just need to finish this. And you're reading, and you. You know, something catches your attention, you get away from it a little bit, then you get back to reading, and it takes it like 20 minutes to read five pages. Mm-hmm. 100%. All right, man. You know what's coming. We're at, it, we're at it probably an hour and a half, hour 40 minutes. Let's wrap this guy up. Yep. We'll put this in the books. You're on record for your whole life now. Your kids will watch this in 18 years, and <laughs> they'll see what you got to say about life, and they'll look back at you. So <laughs> they'll probably plan out a drinking game in college to for, <laughs> for words that I say throughout this. Like every time, do a drink. <laughs> every time Jake or Josh says this, we have to do a shot because they stuttered so much and sounded like idiots. <laughs> That's fine. It's all about growing, right? Yeah. Because then, then when you're older, you can show them about how much you've learned in life and how much yeah. uh, how much smarter you are in the future than yeah, you are at this time. <laughs> or the, we'll do one later and be like, "Gosh, what happened, Dad? Like you can't even <laughs> make your way through an hour and a half now." <laughs> yeah. And hey, maybe that'd be a fun way. Uh, in 20 years, uh, you you're, you can rewatch this with your your kids, and they can ask you questions on on what's changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Sounds good. So final question, man, before we head out of here, you know what's coming. Uh, Josh, what's the meaning of life? <laughs> you know, I said it when you asked about success. This is something I knew has been coming, and I still don't know what the right answer is because there probably isn't any right answer. <laughs> but I would say the meaning of life is f- – the meaning of life is for each person to find their own meaning and what that means for them. And I think that just has everyone's own perception to it then. Yeah. I feel like that's, I mean, then, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack on, on that then. Okay. (laughs) But I guess like then if, Personally, then, I would say, like, for me, it's to, I don't know, it kind of ties everything back together that we've been talking about, like, yeah, um, I mean, I, I talked about a little bit, like, you know, when I get to the end of my life, like, what people's perceptions of me are, like, what I've done in my life to impact others. Um, So it's like at the end of my life, I like to be able to, you know, show my kids and grandkids that I've meant something to someone, had an impact on someone's life in some way, hopefully a good impact on their lives and their grandkids' lives. Um, I think uh, for me, that's being able to like teach them about things, you know, teach them about you know, the past of how things have been done, teach them about what I've learned throughout my life so that they can go on and, you know, um, you know, pass that along and have good lives themselves. I think uh, if I continue to work with a lot of different people in the world, um, just trying to be a good influence um, and have maybe pass along some, you know, perspectives about, you know, what I see in life and, and just develop good experiences. 
Um, so that's what I would say, okay, man. Yeah, no, <laughs> it sounds like, uh, personally for you, uh, it sounds like if, if you are able to reach your definition of success, that's what is your meaning of life for you personally. Yeah. I, and that, and a hundred percent, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I think every, every person's got a different thing in life that they're striving to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and if I you can reach that, then, then, then that's, it yeah. works out. It's all matters. Who cares what everybody else has got to say? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. Josh. Well, I want to thank you for your time. We've been friends our entire life. So I'll, on your comment there, you've made an impact on my life. Um, so I thank you for that. We've made plenty of probably poor decisions where <laughs> we've, we've learned together and we've learned from each other from things not to do as well. Yeah, <laughs> so, <plenty of> those. <laughs> so we can take that going forward in our lives. Yeah. Um, but Josh, I want to thank you. Congratulations on your family and your kid. I'm flying to Puerto Rico tomorrow, then Brazil, and I'll be back in the States in August uh, for our wedding. Yep. So next time we'll be back, it'll either be right around the time or right after when you have your second kid. Yeah. So be looking forward to that. Congrats, man. Big stuff coming. And uh, yeah, we'll drink some beers at my wedding and when we come back to the States. Yeah, that sounds good. I appreciate it. Um, I'm I hope you have safe travels. I, I think it's awesome to see the travels that you have and the place that you've been. And I can't wait for your wedding. I think it's going to be an awesome time and can't wait for August. I got, it's going to be a big month. I, oh, yes. <laughs> I got one final thing I forgot to bring up. Okay. Our wedding's coming in August. Yeah. We have a lot to live up to because <laughs> till this day, your wedding has f been far the most fun <laughs> wedding I've ever been to in my entire life. So we got a big bar to meet to meet, see if we can get as fun a wedding as you had. That's funny. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I, I mean, that was the best. That was one of the best days of my life, and that was a lot of. It was a, a ton of fun, and I love hearing people say that was one of the best weddings they've been to as well. Yeah, I think you know that's one of the meanings of life, just having a good time with people, like doing stuff like this, just having a conversation with them, getting yeah. to you know, just interact with people and have a good time. So I'm yeah. glad that the wedding was fun and I'm sure yours will be also. Hell yeah, man. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Josh, cheers, cheers, my friend. Yeah, thanks Here we for go. having me.